There's currently a lot of negative news circulating around the crypto market, with Binance founder CZ could be sentenced to years in prison tomorrow. On the back of this, Russia plans to ban cryptocurrencies because they're just far too popular. Gary Gensler wants to make sure that all those funds that are in crypto funnel off to Bitcoin ETFs for his friends. The best way of doing so is to kill off the second largest player in the crypto industry, Ethereum, and classify it as a security. Hong Kong is to go live with Bitcoin spot ETFs and Ethereum spot ETFs as well today. How is the crypto market reacting? Bitcoin is starting to come up. It's just put on a little bit of a rally. So far, Ethereum, BNB and Solana are still underwater, but not by much. So far, the crypto market remains in a downtrend, currently down 0.41%. However, with Bitcoin starting to turn around just at the current time and starting to show positive vibes, you could expect if we get follow through, all the top cryptos will join Bitcoin. Looking at the flow of funds into Bitcoin spot ETFs, we can see currently we've had four days of negative outflows. Bitcoin's price has been going up because the shorts are getting liquidated. This forces the price of Bitcoin up, but you can see those shorts are running out. The longs will be hit. One thing that you see with these kind of liquidations, they're always moving between short liquidations and long liquidations. This is just the way the crypto market works. It's the way that all markets work. Over the past 24 hours, there's been $146.28 million worth of liquidations. And you can see the longs have been disproportionately hit. That's been driving the price down. That's starting to turn around. The sh shorts are starting to get hit. You can see it more easily here as we turn to the one hour basis. One thing to keep in mind, when Bitcoin comes up, expect all the alts to follow suit. They may not follow instantly and immediately, but no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity, either to the downside or to the upside. Before the halving, people expected Bitcoin to just go up and up and up. But we've seen from past cycles that Bitcoin tends to get a bit of negative price momentum around the halving. One thing can definitely be said, if you're getting into Bitcoin at the current time, you're making a really wise decision. The key, like everything, don't go all in and more at one level. You'll find that price is always moving in a wave. Bitcoin has been on a bit of a downward path for the past couple of trading sessions. That's why you always look for structural levels of intense structural support. That's where you're likely to bounce up from. And if you can get above it, you're going to the next one. So far, we're seeing quite interesting price action inside the crypto market. We've got to pass through on these specific levels. If we start to go up higher, well, that's looking really good. Always remember, the price is always continuously moving in a wave. The next level of structural resistance is at that 65-200 mark. We're making really good strides. Well, I wouldn't be surprised at all if we come back and retest either the lower ones or come back just a little. Always just understand the price is always moving in waves. If it can't maintain a support level, it's going to go down. But if it can, if it passes, it's going to come up to the next one. It's vitally important to look at what Bitcoin is doing. If Bitcoin is selling down, you can bet Ethereum, Solana, Binance coin, XRP, Dogecoin, ADA, SHIB and any other particular alt will be going down as well. We do get inverters, but they're about 1%. That's why you really want to focus on where the structural levels are in terms of Bitcoin, because you can apply those to your favorite alts. That should be the first thing that you always look at. Another thing that you want to keep your eye on is relative strength and relative weakness. Look at this area just right here on Bitcoin. You can see Bitcoin's price is already above that. 
when we look at Ethereum, you see Ethereum's price is way below that. This is definitely a flight to safety into Bitcoin. And with all the news, I'm not surprised. What about Binance Coin? You can see it's considerably below. What about Solana? It is below as well. XRP, not too bad. It's close. XRP is not doing too badly. It's quite strong. Doge, very low. What about ADA? ADA is low at the moment as well. What about SHIB? It's getting there, but it's still low. When looking at Ethereum, every single crypto has its own unique structural composition. Let's pop on the indicator. This indicator allows us to see what the structural levels are. Currently, Ethereum is trading at 3218. It came up to a really strong structural level and got rejected right at the current time. But we can see just below 3200, there's another structural support level. There's a structural resistance level just a little below 3280. These specific lines allow us to know where smart money is buying and selling up here at around 3300, 3270 and around the current price. The sellers will move in en masse. That's what structure is all about. And the thing to remember, we can't just mark up structure from the past couple of days or even the past couple of weeks. We need to look at all of price history. That's the only thing that will allow us to understand and identify where the true structural levels are from a statistical significance perspective. And if you would like the indicator, you can just go across to ctksmethod.org and pick it up there. When looking at Solana, we can see Solana has a different curve-like structure. Even though it's obeying Bitcoin's gravity, it has different structural levels. Let's pop on the indicator. What we can see in terms of Solana is now the structural levels. We can see that Solana has fairly good structure around that 132 area and structural resistance around the 146. When you get these positive or negative fresh air gaps, price can move very quickly down or it can also move very quickly up. So just be aware of that. It's a good idea to look at Binance Coin. Binance Coin tends to suggest if market positive market momentum is coming into the crypto market, as Binance is the world's largest crypto exchange. When BNB comes up, that means that people are getting very optimistic about crypto prices going up. When it comes down, it's the converse. Let's pop on the indicator and see what's cooking inside the structure of BNB. All right, let's have a peep. BNB is currently trading at 593 and 60 cents. We can see around the 591, there's a level of structural support and that's been reasonably confirmed. At around that 606 area is another area of structural resistance, or in fact, the next area that BNB needs to challenge to get across to maintain bullish price momentum. We always have three-dimensional thinking. We know the price can just go sideways, it can go flat, it can go up, or it can go down. Price is always moving in a wave function, and you can take a lot of advantage of this wave-based trading as a trader. As an investor, you need to know where the structural levels are because that's where you want to DCA in. But you always need to DCA with knowledge. Chart structure will vary from chart to chart, but all charts are intercorrelated and interconnected. We can see that XRP has been stalling around this area. Can structure give us a reason why that is the case? Let's pop on the indicator. All charts move from structural level to structural level. XRP is currently trading at 51.51 and we can see it's come up into some pretty steep structural resistance. When you get a clustering of structural resistance levels, this slows down the price ascent. When you have a negative fresh air gap, price can drop very quickly. Positive fresh air gap, price can come up very quickly. But when you have a lot of clustered resistance levels, it's going to slow the ascent or the positive bullish case down. You could call these congestion areas and XRP has hit one. Without the indicator, you would never gain this level of quality analysis because you simply wouldn't know where the structural levels are. 
Trading and investing is a lifelong career path and it can pay incredible dividends. But one thing is for sure, you need three mindsets, a down mindset, a neutral mindset, and an up mindset, all playing out simultaneously. This is really hard for just new investors and traders to do, but it's critical to learn and to master. The way to master this kind of risk management is just to understand while you control the trade or investment, the market controls the return. By looking through the structural levels of the tier one charts, which are the engine of financial markets globally, confirmed with the tier two and the tier three charts, you'll gain a picture on the markets that institutional investors and traders have. And over time, you'll start to seek out how the market is actually moving. And that's the key. We can think of support and resistance levels just like life. As you're going forward in life, sooner or later we do tend to hit resistance. We'll get a setback and then we'll reach back inside the darkness to find our strength. And by doing so, we'll find a support level inside our own lives, which sets us up for the next life rally. And if you're going through a light pullback, please know that the sun will come out again. That darkness does pass. What's happening is you're just building strength. Every single person is worthy of success. And to get success, just go slow to go fast. And know the universe is conspiring to make you successful. But the success you need and the success you want can be two very different things. No opportunities in life reset daily and life pullbacks are just giving you strength for the next life rally. No matter what you do, it's so important to keep your dedication and commitment up. Also, your mindset is incredibly important. You either win or learn. And if you don't blame, you're going to understand the lesson and not repeat it. Always solving your problems with positive excellence is definitely the way to go. Remember that life is a marathon and not a sprint. Just go slow to go fast and start small and scale. If you have any lessons that you've learned through your experiences inside the market, please share them with our global family. We'd love to hear from you. Have a great day or night ahead, my friends, and Kate and I look forward to catching up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.